Uh -huh. I said, Monique Jump! This is Monique Jump! <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, this is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well, and today our guest is, is Jiwon Moon. Otherwise or, known in America as Rebecca Moon. Yeah. Rebecca Jiwon is a Kyopo, and she is the best example that I've found after 35 years of teaching of someone who knows how to look up their own genealogy. Yes. And she started not in college, she started when she was in high school. Now the trouble is, most Koreans uh, look at the genealogy and say, oh, it's all hancha, I can't read that, I can't, oh, it's all hancha, it's too hard. But she learned the secret of how to look up names in a genealogy and to trace her family line. Now, uh, she is a Munshi. I, I was helping her one time. We came to a guy that had a big, long entry. It goes on for three pages. I thought, my goodness, this is somebody famous. And I looked at it and read his name and it said Eek Jum. I said Eek Jum, Eek Jum, who's Eek Jum? And I remembered it's not Kim and Lee we're talking about, we're talking about Moon. Uh -huh. I said Moon Eek Jum, this is Moon Eek Jum. <laughs> He's one of the most famous men in all of Korean history. Yeah. And he was famous for... He smuggled some cotton from China. Cotton seeds. And then um, took it over to Korea. So thanks to Moon Eek Jum, we have cotton. A late Koryo figure, late Koryo dynasty, who brought cotton into Korea. It was illegal because the Chinese had a monopoly on cotton. They wanted to sell finished cotton, not let Koreans make their own cotton. And so the fact that he smuggled it in, if he'd have been caught, he'd have been killed. Mm -hmm. But he's considered this great hero in Korean culture because he brought cotton to Korea. So we were happy to discover that. So what we did in, in looking up the genealogy and what Rebecca did as a high school student was learn that you really only need to know five characters to read a genealogy. And the five characters are, First is Ja, meaning a son, and you go down from generation to generation, it says and a son, and a son, and a son. So the son introduces a new person. And underneath the son is the name. And your genealogy really helped you because it cheated. The, the names are also written in Hangul. Now, most genealogies don't give the Hangul help for the surname, but this one does, so that really helps a lot. But if you didn't have those names to look up, how would you find that name? What would you do? I'd probably quit. <laughs> no. no, you would, no, look, would. You'd go to Neighbor. Yeah, I, I go to Neighbor and just draw in the Chinese characters and then they'll just tell me what that character is yeah. in Korean. And then you can put it down in either Korean or English. If you're doing it for Korean Americans, you might want to put all these names down in English as you trace your family line. Yeah. So the, the character Ja introduces a new entry. And then the next characters to learn are Sang and Joel. Sang is the birth yes. and Joel is the death. And so that tells you the birth and death date. Uh -huh. But then how do you know the birth and death date? Well, it gives you that in the Chinese yeah. calendar or the Chinese 60 year cycle. Uh -huh. And then you can look that up on a, on a chart. It's in, it's in what's called the Kapja. Most Koreans and Chinese know about this as the animal that you're born under. But that's the simple way to do it. The, the real way to do it is the cop ja. 10 symbols in the cop line and 12 in the ja line. Mm -hmm. And the ja are the animals. Cha, chuk, you're chuk. That's, that's ox, you're number mm -hmm. two on the ox line. And I'm number 11 is dog mm -hmm. and 12 is pig. The real way to do it is to do the 10 symbols and the 12 symbols. And the way they rotate is Six times 10 is 60, five times 12 is 60. It repeats, comes back to the original after 60 years. That's why the 60 years is such a big deal in Korea. You have a big birthday. You've completed one whole cycle in, in 60 years. So you, you see the same character mm -hmm. and look at the characters before it and just look them up on the chart to see this guy was born in 1851 or whenever. Mm -hmm. So that's three of the main characters. The next one is Be. And be means heuja or spouse, spouse or wife in yeah. this case. And here there's a, a little bit of a trick that is linked with the wife character is the character she for surname. Yes. So that's basically what I do a lot of the time is I I don't really know so much of like the dates and when it has like birth and then the dates above that. 
So that part's a little difficult for me, but the spouse part is really fun because I just look for that that spouse or that she character. Yep. And then just write or like draw in the the hamcha for that for that spouse. Just scratch it in on neighbor and bang, there it comes up. Yeah. And then it'll always say Yoon, it's a surname. Yeah. Home, it's a surname. So that tells you you're in the right place if, yeah. if you've got a confirmation like that. Yeah, and usually in a chopo it's nice. The names are repetitive, so I just like draw in next to the chopo or like in the chopo I write like what the surname is and then if I see it later on um, I'll just remember that it was that surname. And and actually that's really a good way to do it because yeah. families tend to intermarry with certain other families. Mm -hmm. There are 250 surnames in Korea. You don't have to learn all 250, you have to learn just the dozen that this family intermarries with. Yeah. So that's the marriage part. And then the uh, final character, the fifth character, is important but not important, and that is the grave. Mm -hmm. And the way I say it's important but not important, the grave tells you a lot about the person. It tells you where they're buried, that's also where they live. Because in the old days you didn't get buried somewhere and then you didn't live somewhere and get buried somewhere else. But if you want to, you can trace it back and find out which county that they lived in. It's sometimes a little bit tricky because it'll mention the county when one person died where they were buried, then the next one will say the same as above, same as above, same as above. So sometimes you have to trace it up. But you can do that. Oh, you yeah. can figure out where they where they were living. And you can see that sometimes a family line would move. And the, the tendency is they would move uh, one time and stay there for four, five, six generations. Uh -huh. And someone else would move out and go to another place. The reason they would move is in the old days, Koreans just didn't shiji kada, they also changa kada. So those are the five characters that you use to navigate your way through a genealogy. And as you uh, go up your family line, uh, you can check out and find the name, birth and death date, and who they married, and uh, fill in your whole family tree that way. Yeah, it's so, really simple. But any of you, young people included, can learn how to read a genealogy by just navigating the five main characters, then mm -hmm. everything else you just look up on neighbor. Yeah. And it's easy, and it's done. Yeah. It's okay, good. so read your genealogy. It's a lot of fun. And we'll see you next time. Bye.